Hello, Tidal of Upstream. I'm Felix, an open source maintainer based in London in the United Kingdom. Today, I'm going to talk to you about maintaining your maintainers, the human side of open source. First, a few words about me. I've been an open source maintainer for the past 14 years and work on a number of NPM modules for working with HTML and plain JavaScript, most notably HTML Parser 2, Cheerio, and Pass 5. In the past, I've worked at several Silicon Valley tech companies, such as Coinbase and Facebook, as a full stack engineer. But for the past two years, I've been working full time on open source. Okay, so you do not want your maintainers to quit on you. I've encountered this in the past where a maintainer of a big dependency of a project of mine quit. And let me tell you, it's not fun. So let's talk about why, why it is bad when an open source maintainer quits on you. When a maintainer quits, their projects won't be updated anymore. Quite straightforward. That also means your software will not receive bug fixes anymore, security issues will not be addressed, and platform changes will cause breakages. So if it happens to you, then you essentially are left with two options. The first one is to pick up the pieces and maintain the project yourself, or to migrate to an alternative, should there be one. Okay, let's talk about why do maintainers quit. In Tidelift's 2023 open source maintainer survey, more than 50% of respondents said that working on open source adds their personal stress level, which is the number one downside of working on open source. Also more than 50% of maintainers have considered quitting projects with more than a fifth having actually quit projects in the past. And you know what? That's actually me as well. I have quit projects in the past that were just not fun anymore to maintain. So let's talk about what you can do. And of course, there are financial options, which honestly is always awesome if you're able to do it. And I think companies like Tidelift are doing an amazing job of covering that side. And then, then there are also non-financial options, and that is what I want to talk about today. So, four non-financial options. First off, it should be obvious, but be a nice human when asking for help. Second, interact with projects and you know make no make it known that you've noticed. In classic YouTube speak, comment, like, and subscribe. And, you know, every action counts to help maintainers realize that they do have an impact. And finally, if you can, contribute to the project directly or, you know, allow your employees to, to work on them. So let's talk about being a nice human when asking for help. And I want to go through this conversation that's now more than a year old, but still super memorable to me. And I think it really signifies... I, how you can communicate or not communicate when you do have an issue. This conversation started on a pull request that was merged in 2013. And then nine years later, a GitHub user came along and essentially asked how to use the feature that was added in this pull request. I had recently explained this in another thread, so I just linked to it. And then one of the people that was on the original pull request like all the way back in 2013, commented and asked me, hey, do you live in Nebraska by any chance? And linked to this XKCD, which is quite iconic nowadays. But if you don't know it, it talks about how all modern digital infrastructure just stands on top of a project some random person in Nebraska has been thanklessly maintaining since 2003, which, you know, is a super, super nice compliment. Yet the person that asked the original question and revived the thread came back and asked, if someone lives in Nebraska or not, what matters more is responding to a random person in decent manners, not nerdish manners. They very clearly didn't get the joke and also seemed quite upset about my reply. Yet they were not able to, you know, do this in a nice way. So I ended up ignoring this and just thanked Altana for the super, super nice compliment and said, hey, this made my day. As an open source maintainer, this is unfortunately way too frequent where we have the the choice to either ignore an insult and just close an issue or to tell them off and, you know, still close the issue. Okay, let's talk about other ways to empower open source maintainers. So, of course, compliments are awesome and like a well-placed compliment can really make someone stay. Then, you know, reactions are already really, really helpful in just making it feel less like you as a maintainer are just shouting into a void. Like, especially when releasing a new version of a package, it's unfortunately way too frequent that the only way you find out that anyone is using it because they file issues that something is broken. And, you know, if you have a very clean release, 
you will probably not hear from anyone about it. It's a, a very, very thankless job in that way. So, you know, if you can just add a reaction on the release, that's highly appreciated. And of course, finally, pull requests and other ways to contributing to projects, really like create a community and make sure that maintainers don't feel as alone doing their work. So let's talk about contributing to a project directly. Tidelift's open source maintainer survey has a whole bunch of options for contributing to projects ranked by how valuable the maintainers would find them. If you're a manager, I highly recommend that you encourage your reports to contribute to open source software, not just to help maintainers stay sane, stay in place, but also to just make sure that if they do churn at some point, you might be in a good position. So let's talk about this. What if a maintainer churns anyway? Well, the best part of open source software is you can fix this yourself. So if a project has stalled and is not being maintained anymore, you should be ready to take it over. Ideally, you can take over the existing repository and the package manager listing and just continue the project as it is. This gives a clear upgrade path for other people that use the library and prevents concurrent efforts. So this way, everyone can agree on, a, on the same place to continue um, and you might have a community at the end. The big requirement of this is that the maintainer already knows you. So, you know, you should interact with them while the project is still alive. As an example from my own life, one of the biggest modules I maintain, Cherio, depends on Pass5. At some point, the maintainer of Pass5 wanted to step away, which would have posed an existential risk to Cherio. Thankfully, me and the maintainer had interacted a lot over the years, and so I was the first person he pinged, asking if I wanted to take over the project. Two other people also volunteered, and now the project is alive and well, and is continuing to get updates, which means Cheerio can also flourish. With that, I'm at the end. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you took something away from this talk. If you want to, catch me online, and otherwise, have a good rest of your day. Thanks.